So overall, how does this algorithm uh, work? So uh, here's the input. As input, we have a sort of uh, uh, training example. So xi is our representation, and ya is the class. Now, typically, xi is just a numeric vector, but you can also use uh, the, you, you can also use categorical attributes. And y is just the class label. And uh, we also have a new testing point x that comes in. So what does the classifier do? Uh, it takes this point x the point that we want to classify, it computes the distance between that point and every training point that we had. Right? So you get a set of distances. Then out of that set of distances, you pick k closest neighbors, and you look at the classes of the k closest neighbors, and you pick the most frequent one. Right? So, and that is the output of your classifier. Simple as that. So uh, here's an example of how you could use it, and this is one of the uh, this is one of the very successful applications of uh, nearest neighbor methods. So uh, this again is digit classification. Remember, we talked about the postal codes and and how you want to recognize them. So the goal is to take a bitmap like that and say that that is a number two uh, rather than uh, something else. So uh, how would you do that? Um, you can do it with nearest neighbors. So what is the representation? These are 16 by 16 bitmaps. Each pixel is a gray, gray valued pixel, so it's just a single number that you're looking at. So for a nearest neighbor, you need to define a distance function. Right? And in this case, because they're appropriately boxed in already, uh, we can use a very simple distance function. Right? We could just compute Euclidean distance over individual pixels. We don't need to do any sort of morphing or alignment or anything like that, right? So you could take, uh, you could take, say, this pixel in image A, this pixel in image B, they're both numbers, subtract the numbers, square them, and add it up over all pixels uh, in the two bitmaps. So that is the distance between two uh, pictures. Now, if you do that, um, you're all set. You can run, uh, you can run a nearest neighbor classifier. So, um, and uh, here would be an example. So if this is the point that we want to try to classify, uh, then uh, this is the set of nearest neighbors according to that uh, distance function. So this is on, the, this is on a fraction of, an M of the MNIST data set. Right. So you look at that and you see that it's actually doing, uh, it's actually doing quite well. Right. So uh, this, this looks like a zero and most of these things are probably zeros. Right. And these are training examples, so you know what digits they are, so you would know how to classify them. Right. Um, so it's actually doing reasonably well. Uh, this one is kind of tricky, right? and that's because uh, sometimes you, you have some nines that look a lot like a four. Right. So if you showed that to me, I would actually say it's a four, but it is a nine. Um, and then, uh, and then it messes up uh, in some places. So here, the, the one nearest neighbor would actually work quite well, because this is a 9 and this is a 9. But if you take something like 7 nearest neighbors, uh, it, would be, it would be overruled by a 7. So you would actually classify this as a 7. You would make a mistake. Yeah? But if we have this equal amount of nearest neighbors from two different classes, like in example 2? So the question is, what happens if you have equal amounts of nearest neighbors? Uh, it's, it's coming up a few slides down. Um, so. <clears throat> So I said this is one of the more uh, successful examples of nearest neighbors. Uh, so a seven nearest neighbor uh, classifier on MNIST gets about 95% accuracy. And, uh, and this is very, it's a very simple classifier, right? Uh, you're just computing distances between uh, bitmaps and looking at the most, uh, most similar bitmaps and then just using the majority out of seven nearest ones. So uh, this number is very impressive because much more sophisticated classifiers, the support vector machine, which is probably, it's, it's, it's a state of the art for almost all domains that we have, uh, it performs about the same. And this 95% is particularly impressive because humans are not perfect in this task either. Right? So if you take a human being and you make them recognize these digits, and these studies have been done, you get about a 97% accuracy out of humans. So humans misclassify about 3%. And, uh, and a very simple nearest neighbor classifier misclassifies uh, 5%. So uh, that's quite impressive. Okay, so we talked about classification. You can also use nearest neighbors for uh, regression. Now remember, regression, you're not predicting a class, you're predicting a number. So some input comes in and you're trying to predict what number it is. So how do you use nearest neighbors for regression? The input is the same, only now the y's are real numbers. 
years. And they can be ages or heights or weights of things or profits from some strategy um, or ratings. And then you have a testing point and you want to predict, uh, you, you want to predict, say, the rating for that testing point or the age of that testing point. The algorithm is identical. Uh, you compute the distance between the testing point and every training point. You pick k nearest uh, examples, but then instead of taking a majority vote, you just take the mean of the corresponding lines, right? So you found your seven nearest neighbors, you look at their ratings, and you average them to get the prediction for your testing point. So let's look at an example of how this uh, could work. So uh, this, is, uh, this is regression in one dimension. My x's are just single numbers along this axis, and I'm predicting the y, right? So let's say that this is the true function that I'm going to predict. Um, now, I'm not given a true function. If I had a true function, I wouldn't have to do regression. Right? I'd just go home. Uh, so uh, what I'm given instead is I'm given a set of training examples. So these are points on that function where I know that for, uh, for this value of x, I have this value of y, right? So when x is 1, then y is 4. Um, and, I don't, uh, and I don't get the function itself. I just get this collection of points. So this is my training set. So how can I use this training set to, um, to predict new values? So suppose I want to predict the value of the function for 4. So what would it be for one nearest neighbor? And what you do for that is you just look at the x-axis, right? So this is the point that I want to predict. What is the nearest training example? The nearest training example is right there, right? So that's the x value. Uh, that's, that's the value of the attribute x. And that is the y value that corresponds to it. So if you did a one nearest neighbor regression, then this would be the prediction for x equals 4. So for x equals 4, you would predict y equals 6 based on a single nearest neighbor. Uh, and of course, that's not very close to my true function, right? So what if I take two nearest neighbors, right? Two nearest neighbors, uh, it's, this is the nearest one and this is the second one, right? So I would take... Uh, three and six and average them, and I'd get four and a half. So my two nearest neighbor prediction would be somewhere in there. Right? And that's a lot closer to where the fun to where the true function was. Now, if I took more uh, nearest neighbors, so I could take three nearest neighbors. Uh, so this is the third nearest one. So it would drag the prediction down a little bit. And you see, as you vary uh, the number of nearest neighbors, you will get different predictions. Right? So. And there's usually a sweet spot somewhere. So in this case, two looks like the best prediction. Now, um, here's, a question. here's a question. Suppose I was trying to, with this training set, suppose I was trying to predict the value for x equals 0. Is there a good value of k for that prediction? <coughs> no, there isn't. Right. Uh, so this is something that you want to know about nearest neighbor methods. The big difference between predicting 0 and predicting a 4, when I'm predicting a 4, I'm predicting inside the range of training examples. So that's something that's called interpolation. Right? You're predicting a value that's between the values that you already know. And k nearest neighbors is really good for that. When I'm predicting a 0, I'm predicting outside of the range. So that's called extrapolation, and k nearest neighbors stinks for that. But we'll talk about other methods. So in the next lecture, Nigel will talk about linear regression, and linear regression is actually quite good for um, extrapolation.